Hmm. Here we go again. Uh, <clears throat> now we're going to have an introduction of the uh, characters. <clears throat> <clears throat> we're going to start talking with uh, terminal blocks. That's where you put the wires. <clears throat> it clips on uh, a little notch here and a little notch there on something called a DIN rail. <clears throat> the back side is uh, insulation straight across. Um, I couldn't read that looking at it, but I think I could probably read it here. I think these are about... Uh, Mm, probably 15 amp, 600 volt, 15 amp. I use these in uh, control panels for hydraulic uh, controls. And we'll, that's just to show you uh, <clears throat> a size. <clears throat> Next thing up, uh, let's see what yellow looks like. That's the back side. I like uh, this one because of this side over here, um, well, never mind. It's just personal preference. It clips on also onto the DIN rail. Uh, these are the ones that I, I got from uh, Clarice Lai. Uh, her name is in the previous video, and it uh, shows their company address. These are 32 amp. Do I have the same size? Yeah. 32 amp. 600 volt, 32 amp. Some of them are rated higher voltage. You can you can get them up to 1600 volts. Uh, and these people sell everything. So, uh, that's the uh, yellow one. Uh, 32 amp. And then we got... These are 76 amp. Everything just scaled up. It looks pretty much like it, except it's scaled up. Insulation clear across the back. Same DIN rail uh, clips on the bottom. DIN rail! I'll probably embarrass myself, but because these things usually pop right on. I have not used this brand. Yeah, they snap on. So that's a a, a piece on a DIN rail. Um, if you're going to connect uh, uh, multiple uh, terminal blocks to be uh, the same wire, basically, is what we're using them for. You have this piece. It's called a rigid connector. You, you can snap off however many you want. Um, wherever you change from uh, one wire to the next, like we're going to change from the uh, black one to the red one, then we we snap on a cover. It's got like four little pins that uh, that fit into the back of the terminal block. And when you have that in there, and you put your uh, connector piece in, then that, that insulates uh, this block from the next block, so you, if there's a 220 volt difference, it won't uh, just be a dead short. Oh, you notice this has some nice screw uh, screw heads on it also. Um, we can look at a smaller version of that thing. This is a um, size comparison. The bottom one is the 32 amp, and the top one is 76 amp. Uh, this one's got a sc screw that was stuck in it in the bag. It's not stuck, it comes right out. But uh, that is what... That metal bar that goes across, it conducts it. That's what you screw into. And that's what connects them all together. Um, I've snapped all my covers on. <laughs> Preparation for the next step. Um, 
Oh, got another little item here that's eh, semi-related. Everybody recognizes a fork terminal. You put it on a wire. You crimp it. Uh, you can crimp it. You can solder it. You can crimp it and solder it. These are different in that they are what they call forked flanged connectors. Um, you put this, it open the screw up enough that the whole, the little tabs on the end will go under the screw head. And then when you tighten it back down, if it's loose, this can slide around in there, but it can't get out. I have multiple sizes and I thought I was picking up two different sizes, but I picked up two the same. These are, uh, These fit AWG 12 and 10. I've also got them in uh, 14, 12. That's the only two sizes of wire we're using on this small wire in the house. Everything else is like 6 and 8. Um, uh, 4. AWG 4. Okay, I'm going to snap some of this stuff onto a uh, DIN reel and come back and show you what... Uh, what a group of it looks like assembled, as soon as I learn how to pause this. Okay. And continuing. Let's try the other one first. This is the one we've been talking about. This is uh, what it looks like when you snap all these things on this terminal rail. Um, I'm going to turn it the way it makes sense to me. What have I done there? in first there's a difference in the two ends the the one that's the one that's shown at the bottom uh that's the one you put on first the one on the other side is more springy and it snaps over so you want to put the uh that one first Where are you? Oh, it looks different because there's a difference in the... I, I put this one on backwards uh, to get the, uh, the ice... <clears throat> I put this one on backwards to get the isolator piece between the red and the black, because these get jumped together. <clears throat> I didn't bother walking in another room to find another isolator piece for right here. Um, but they come in groups of 100. And we're using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, probably 6. That'd be 60 of them. So that'll, that'll leave uh, 40 spares. Anyway. You come in uh, to one of these blocks, which your uh, upper screw, like a black, gets an upper screw, and a red would get a lower screw. And that gives you one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five empty screws to land wires on <clears throat> so you've, you've consolidated uh <clears throat> five wires into one so that's like hooking five pairs of wires to one breaker and you can extend that that theory on down as many as you need but you really want to put more than than five uh receptacles on one breaker uh i'm, I'm mostly looking for three or four Anyway, so for a pair of uh, three blacks and three reds, you hook up five receptacles. 
Uh, and the next group over here, you cook up five or something. Doesn't have to be receptacles, but generally it will be. Uh, it could be a a ceiling fan and re receptacles. And then a third group for some more. So you've taken up three of your seven breakers uh, for receptacles. <clears throat> now, next thing is we have a dedicated breaker here. That's your fourth breaker. And that's for future uh, split air conditioning. Uh, that's the fifth. We've got two more breakers. So we got two dedicated circuits down here uh, rated for 32 amps. And uh, that can be a refrigerator uh, or an un uninterruptible power supply for a computer or something like that. And then we have uh, this groups here. These get jumpers, just like these up here get jumpers across three. These get jumpers across, uh, <clears throat> well, I've got six on here. And uh, this will be the white wires because Carice didn't have this in white and green. If I got a different model, I could have got the colors I wanted. But I wanted the 32 amps and some other features. There's 90 different kinds of these things. You're going to see a few more in a minute. Uh, anyway, this is lighter than that to me, so we're going to do the white ones on here. That's what the neutrals for the uh, uh, 110s. And over here, we're going to have the uh, green bond wires. <clears throat> These uh, end uh, barriers here, <clears throat> they're a different brand. There's something I already had. Um, they don't match the outside shape. However, you'll notice that they cover up the uh, electrical contacts completely. Uh, they have uh, two screws that they come down beside the two locking pieces here. You see the screws is on the left, and that spreads uh, or pushes those in rather towards the uh, den rail. Oh, speaking of din rail, this is called a hat section. Uh, because if you turn it upside down, it looks a little bit like a Panama hat. This is standard height. Uh, you can get C sections and some other F, all kinds of odd names. Uh, I've only ever used C. Um, and the industrial ones, uh, I did everything where you could pick the machine up with it. So... They have another one of these things. It's the same thickness of metal. The flanges are the same. The base is the same. The slotted holes are the same location. Same size. But this uh, vertical height here is about twice. <clears throat> now, I didn't choose to use any of that on this. Uh, one, is more weight, so it costs more. Uh, but the other is uh, the fuse holders... Uh, have a, they touch the base plate. They sit on the base plate and snap on the din rail. And that, that makes it more stable when you're popping the fuses uh, in or out. If you do it right, you'll never change the fuse. But if you have to change the fuse, it's nice to have the thing not pop off the rail while you're trying to uh, pop the fuse out. They have a, a sort of a mechanical escapement, so there's not really much load on it when you're taking them in and out. An uh, ounce or two, but still. Uh, it's made to sit against something flat, uh, so I got the thing that it fits. This this rail here is 35 millimeter. There's a wider uh, wider size. It's not much more. It might be 40 millimeter, but it's it's uh, or, or 37. You know, it's wider. I don't know why, but these um, uh, I haven't got a loose block to show you. They're all they're all snapped on to something. Uh, these blocks I got from Clarice, uh, they fit both sides of the DIN rail. So you can use the wider one or the uh, the pretty much standard 35. Anyway, an assembled piece. Yeah, ours are setting up uh, with an inch and five eighths space underneath of them. Uh, I bought standoffs, plastic standoffs, uh, rated 1,600 volts and 1,200 pounds of pool. Seems like overkill. I'm going to use those in the... Uh, solar room to mount uh, 
um, bus bars that run down the length of the building for the 48 volt. On this, we just we bent metal straps over, down, and, and then put uh, a leg bolt into the con right into the concrete. But that gives us an inch and a half space to run all the wires around and hook them up on this back to the other side or around this way and hook them up to that side. And uh, there's like three of these uh, uh, bus bars. There's, there's one of them for uh, just light switches and stuff. It's a little short one. It's only like six inches long. Uh, these here are, uh, oh, this, this DIN rail, this is not the standard length. It comes, uh, hmm, three meters. I think it's three meters pieces. I think the shortest you can get was one meter and then, and it went longer from there. Uh, I told them to, uh, cut it in, in like three equal pieces and it would fit in, uh, better for shipping. Plus, it gives me a nice square factory cut on the uh, on the ends. They probably do it with a shear, you know. Uh, yeah, that's sheared. So it gives you a really square thing without a, uh, any wire edges or something to file. It's smooth. Feels just like the other end that it hadn't been cut. Anyway, you can imagine this thing mounted vertical in the box. Wires coming and going. Uh, extra wire underneath of it on uh, laying in between the panel backer and the uh, and the bar. So we open it up and and everything's numbered. Oh, they uh, offer little pieces that snap in these things. Uh, there's there's registers for them here, where you can put uh, uh, you can write on them. It's a plastic that's a rough surface, and uh, you can uh, put wire numbers on here. Um, I do my wire numbers in order from like one to a hundred so that if uh, there may be a one, two, three, four, nine, 11, 15, 19, 21, if there's, if there's no number, it's not somewhere else. That number doesn't exist in the diagram. So, uh, uh remember I had the guys that used to wire brush rust off of stuff to paint it, you know, on, on machinery. They did my wiring. <laughs> they only knew the way I told them. Okay. Next little trick. These uh, gray ones we looked at, that was the first ones we looked at in, in the previous video. Uh, these are uh, uh, a T and B, Thomas and Betts. Uh, I used those because they came in nice boxes of 100. I, I get these things. These, these are ancient. I, they're probably 20 years old. Um, that's for the 16 wires as it goes... Uh, box to box or goes from box to the four-way switches and back to another set and out um these up here that's a this is another kind of an an odd block this is what i was looking for when i when i found the uh uh Cherie sells all this other stuff power tools and a huge warehouse i mean <laughs> It's it's absolutely huge, and I don't know how what kind of forklifts they got, but they can lift a good forty feet, because that stuff is really stacked. Anyway, what this is, is this is a terminal block. It's got two ends and two outs. That's four wires. <clears throat> They're all connected together. The bar that goes down here and runs underneath that and comes back up over here. All four of them are connected to the same thing. Now, uh, I only need three. For this application and for the uh, um, battery management system uh, um, circuit boards. But I have to connect three wires together. So here I got the uh, a wire coming in. Like from uh, the next thing to the left on the ring. A wire going out to the next... Uh, room or next uh sub panel and then i can connect uh light bulbs with one one wire under one screw so i got two i can hook up two different lights with a, with a single wire i could also put these two of these side by side jump them and put uh well how many six more wires if i had any need to it don't have any need to it anyway 
this is a nice neat way to uh, make connections other than um, well twisting the wires get them wrapped with tape is what you get if you if you don't camp on this in the Philippines that's how they're gonna wire your house and if you have one of those hardy flicks or plywood drop ceilings with the hidden lighting around the outside all the eels of the wiring are just stowed up on top of the hardy flex. And you won't find any wire nuts because they're expensive over there. Uh, I sent a, a 1500 of each size it's for other people who need them. I'm not going to use any of them. I did use the uh, little orange ones and a couple of blue ones. Um, the end of the wire is it goes to the uh, floodlight fixtures. The floodlight fixtures are bare wire. <clears throat> the... Uh, uh, the ones that uh, uh, Wilcon sells, they have some that have a brass block on there. You put the wire in and tighten the set screw against them. Uh, and they're like 49 pesos for a light socket. Seem well made. Anyway, you don't have to twist wires together. But if you have one of those drop ceilings, it looks beautiful from underneath. But it's like if you didn't see the render on the house and you saw that hollow block, Make you a little uneasy. And there's no way to trace it, fix it, uh, correct it. Uh, you'll find that a, a, a light switch for a room is in the wrong wall, next to the wrong door. And uh, it's all a snarl of wires up there. You might get to figure out which to connect them, but how you can get up there and walk around on Hardy Flex. So uh, we ran all our uh, conduits to a... To a uh, to a, a chase basic built into the posts. I mean, the posts are like uh, 30 by 32 inches. Uh, they're probably not loaded to 200 pounds per square inch. <laughs> I think they're rated for. Uh, we mix our concrete for 5,000 psi, add some water to it to make it really workable, and end up with around 4,000 maybe. Unless it was a seriously windy day and we lost water off the top. And then you get uh, micro cracks on the surface. I don't think they go very deep, but they look unsightly. Uh, Boyce and Paint makes some paint that, that sucks up into them and uh, seals them. And James uh, from James Hightower from Texas Filipino, he's got some paint he uses. I think it's made by Nippon. Um, it's a waterproofing paint. Uh, two coats of it on a fish tank and nothing leaks. And it's, it's a really pretty thing. And he put like four or five coats on his roof slab that he walks on. It's a uh, living area. And that's that's the, the finish up there. Anyway, this is an assembled another block. And the only common denominator is, is the din rail. You can put all kinds of different blocks. These are just representative of the ones I'm using. That doesn't mean you can't buy, buy uh, uh, one of these with only three connectors. I only need three, but... Uh, I was going to buy a box of 100. And then I got to thinking, you know, I haven't seen those any place except on, on uh, um, Outback Garage. He had the, the three the three position ones. That's what made me know there was even in existence. And then I, I found uh, Sharice Lai's uh, sales thing. The girl got the, the fuse. Oh, another thing. You can put fuse holders on the same DIN rail. So if you wanted to send... Uh, power to something, but limited to uh, like a number 22 wire for uh, LED light is overkill. Uh, 25 is hard to find. Any higher net you won't find. But if you wanted to use a, a lighter wire, you can put a 7 amp fuse holder here, and when you come out of your terminal block, go into one end of the fuse holder, and the other end going wherever the wire had been going. And that way you can use lighter wire. Uh, if I was trying to build the cheapest possible construction I could I would probably have done that if I didn't I really didn't know about some of this stuff learn as you go anyway that's um terminal blocks and din rail and forked um forked flanged wire ends used for receptacles <laughs> and light switches to send from the U.S. Reason being, you can't take the screw all the way out of them. They're crimped on the end so they don't fall out when, when they're in shipping. And you can't take them out and use a ring terminal. You have to use a fork terminal. And if you use a fork terminal, 
you want to make sure that the the, the wire the, if the thing's a half uh, half or quarter turn loose that uh, they can't just shake out uh and you say why would it shake across the philippines on seven thousand islands we have um hmm what was the that number 1100 small earthquakes in a day uh most time you can't feel them sometimes you can Sometimes, uh, I was in one, uh, uh, trying to draw up something for the house on the computer, and a piano come at me across the room. It was just going about three inches every time the earth changed direction. It never went back the other way. Every shake, it came towards me. So I'm there with my feet against the piano and one arm braced against the door, trying to keep from getting crushed. So my wife comes home and says, how'd you like that quake today? She says, what quake? She said, well, we're on the other side of the river. It's a different fault line. I said, you didn't have any earthquakes? She said, no. So then we started uh, asking each other every time we had one, did you have one? And we haven't found one of them that went across that river from, from where we stayed to where we're building. <clears throat> we both get quakes, but uh, in various sizes. Anyway, when, when you have that, you don't want uh, somewhere out in, in your system of uh, 2,000 wires, you don't want to have four or five of them fall out of the bracket. And uh, those flange connectors will keep them under there. And when it's hard to get loose, they'll arc and they'll weld themselves on, and they'll make conduct. Uh, they'll be conducting then, if you didn't have the screw. <clears throat> How long is this? Too long. I'm not going to divide it. I'm going to. I'm going to put this thing up just the way it is. Because uh, I. Th I, I'm uh, more of a content channel than a personality channel. Uh, I just wanted to be able to see what I was, I was pointing at, on on the these things. I mean, what what I see in the screen when I look at it, and when I point at it, or I I take a, a screwdriver and uh, you know. Like that. That's how you move those things. There's a little uh, there's a little slot. On the other side you see a uh, uh, oh there's a row of slots. Here they are. Right, right here. And that's how you pop them off. Super simple. They're pretty easy to put on and they're real easy to take off. And that works... Uh, the T and B's are unique among these things. You've got a place to pop them off on one side, fits in there. You've got a place to pop them off from the other side. Um, and the reason you might be doing that is because uh, one side of all these terminal blocks has got plastic clear across. The other side's got contacts showing. You can turn, uh, if you haven't got uh, end barriers, you can add an extra block that you're not going to wire and just flip it around. When you turn it around, that solid plastic is towards your end barrier. It doesn't look like it's unfinished with uh, metal terminal parts, you know, showing through the end of the thing. <clears throat> and, of course, if you did that, then if you only had the uh, the one pop-off piece, it, it wouldn't look, it would look like there was something missing here and something added on the other side. So uh, that, that's an advantage to the T and B's. I need to see why that's not. Uh, I think that's another way you can take them off. It's also a way you can you can seat them down. That popped right in there. Any more like that? I like that. Those are that'll be on every one of the ones I got from Sharice. That's a um. Anyway, I believe this video is uh, long enough to be a short novel. Hmm, long novel. Next, uh, next thing I'm going to look at is tooling up to do wiring on one of these complex jobs. What? Uh, we're not using any power tools, but we've got some decent wire strippers and uh, uh, crimpers. Crimpers is another thing. Uh, uh, the, you you can have crimpers made out of the, 
the sheet metal, this, this stamp that you, clamp, uh, that you just put on those wires with the uh, either plastic uh, cover piece, they call them stake-ons, uh, or you have some that have got uh, shrink tubing already on them, and, and you only have to shrink the back half. Uh, but those crimpers that fit those do not fit the crimp only or solder uh, crimp types because they haven't got that extra layer of stuff out there. They're, uh, they're smaller. So it takes a, a unique crimper to, to work on uh, real electrical terminals. But if you go to the auto parts store and you buy the, the stake-ons with the big plastic thing on the outside, uh, then you, you the, the crimpers you buy from them will work on them because they won't be able to sell you one that, that works on the uh, solder-on connectors. Electronic stores would have them. Uh, people like electrical supply over in Raleigh. Uh, you couldn't go wrong there. That's where I buy those T and B's when I was uh, in, in making panels up. Okay. Say a little prayer for the people that's got, got or trying not to get COVID. Don't look quite too bold in that picture. Ah. Bye.